So we've got this DIY Bifarco jump skiff that we made in the last video. I think the next thing we need to do is make some modules to go in it. And what else can we fill it with except for, you know, something Bifarco? So the next thing is to build something called a Bifarco Rampage, which is a really good envelope generator that is by Bifarco. If you're not confident with actually making these modules, they've got a lot of workshops all over the world in major cities that you can go and, you know, learn how to build them. I've got my soldering iron, which is about seven pounds. I've got my Swiss Army knife, which has got these lovely things, which are gonna snip all of the electrical component legs. I've got solder, and yeah, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> right, I think I've got it. I think I know what I'm doing. First things first is we see what's inside the back. It's always useful to have a little Tupperware box to shove things in. Front panel. Woo. Got loads of bags, all the bags. It's got two printed circuit boards. And if you look carefully on this one, they've already soldered on the hard to do surface mount stuff that you might mess up. So that is fine because the rest of it is a piece of cake. Every single resistor has a load of colored bands on it. And they all mean different things. And luckily on the actual instructions for this, it tells you what these bands mean. So I'm looking for 3200K resistors, which means you need a brown, black, black, orange, brown. Brown, black, black, orange, brown. Okay, well these must be the 100K resistors. Tear them all off. And then I find the, um, the color, the numbers that fit to it, and I'm just gonna get going. So I got the soldering iron, and I put it on the actual piece of resistor, and I get a bit of solder, and I just plop it on the soldering iron and the bit. Let it heat up, let it make a nice blob. Lovely, do the same here. Bit of solder on the soldering iron and on the pad. If one isn't looking too good, then just re-wet it. Resistor's done. So the next thing you do, you find these things in there, which are called diodes. So you go like this. You get your diode, you make sure it's the right way around. And the white stripe on the PCB actually means the black stripe on the diode. God damn it. Diodes are done. So you see on this socket, there's actually a bump at the top. That bump actually aligns with the bump on the actual picture of the I see. You make sure the legs are going to stay in, so you bend them slightly inwards, and there we go. And if you wriggle it around, it won't fall out. Then you just solder. Transistors! Then you solder your header pins in, and they go on the actual same side as the rest of them. And after that, you kind of have a look around, see if you've missed anything. So that is the first board of this module actually done. The only thing left to do is just double check the back, see if you've done anything idiotic. Back from the break, and I've got to do the next PCB, which is actually the control PCB. these pin headers. So these go on the bottom with the other components. These two circuit boards are now pretty much done. I mean, this one definitely is. I've had a look through and I've made sure I've made no mistakes. And this one is up to the point of where it's to this. Now it's quite a crucial step because you don't want to solder all of the bits onto here before you actually see that they actually fit behind the actual panel. Oh, 
there we go, it's built. As you can see, it's looking lovely. You know, all the knobs work. I've double checked everything. There was a little problem. I accidentally put a bit too much solder on one bit that kind of blobbed over to another blob. But I fixed it because I had a look, I had a really good look at it to see if there was any problems. And it worked pretty much first time. So that's good news. And it will work the first time you plug it in for you as well if you read the instructions and do it carefully. So here we've got the uh, Rampage, looking lovely, but it's not gonna work on its own. What do you need? Ding! If you actually plug in the actual envelope generator, you speed it up. You know, you get a noise already. Even though it's not technically made, it's not technically designed to be an oscillator, you can still make it be an oscillator. So I see on its own without actually any patching, you can still make noise even though it's not actually a noise making module.